So hello everyone. Uh, the subject of our talk is Tesla hacking 2017. How we remotely compromise the gateway BCM and autopilot issues of smart cards. Uh, my name is Ling Liu, and this is Yue Feng Du, and this is Wen Kai Zhang. We are researchers from Tencent Key Security Lab. We are focusing on the research of smart cards. In 2016, we successfully implemented a remote attack on Tesla Model S. In both driving and parking mode, today we will talk about the research we did last year on Tesla Model X, including what we found and how we customized the Easter Egg. Our presentation is divided into five parts, including how we hacked into the central infotainment display how we bypass the code signing protection. Besides, we will review the details of OTA process. We will explain how we customize the Easter egg. Finally, we will talk about how we routed the APE remotely. At last year's Black Hat, we explain how we utilize two vulnerabilities in WebKit to explore the browser of Tesla. Uh, after that, Tesla fixed these two vulnerabilities. However, the version of WebKit still kept on 534.34 for a long time. Uh, this time, we utilize only one vulnerability to achieve arbitrary code execution. This is the proof of concept. It has been public for many years. You may need to test it under ASAN to trigger a crash. So from the code, uh, we can see it is actually a classic UF vulnerability related to transform list element. So to explore it, we need to figure out when the memory buffer allocated and freed and what's the memory buffer used for. The result is the memory buffer is uh, the memory buffer belongs to the vector, which is a variable values, and the buffer is used for storing SVG transform objects. As you can see in the function initialize, a new memory buffer allocated immediately after the read, after the old buffer read, which makes the exploit more difficult. So in our exploit, we use the, the function clear instead of the function initialize. So we can put the structure we want right in the place the old buffer occupied before. After that, we can access the new structure by accessing the matrix element. From the view of memory, SVG matrix is part of SVG transform. So after buffer read, we can directly read and write the read error memory by getting or setting the property of matrix. So in our exploit, after the buffer read, we filled with the structure array storage. We can leak m underscore alloc base. Uh, because m underscore Alloc base is a member of the array storage structure. Also, M underscore alloc base is a pointer to the to this array storage structure. So we leak the heap address by writing the matrix A by writing the property A of matrix, we can we can add the I'm on the alloc base to any address. So when buffer, so when array and shift, we can achieve arbitrary address free. Next, think about such a situation. The buffer of uint32 array overlaps with array storage structure. Then we made a fixed string in JavaScript array by constructing a series of fake structures, including string object, JS string, and string input, 
the length is written in Po is big enough, so we can read the whole memory through this fake string. After all of this, restore arbitrary address write is not hard, so just write the shell code into the JIT memory. Now we get a shell on CID. However, the privilege is very low. Last year, we utilized a well-known vulnerability to gain root privilege on CID. However, this time things become different because Tesla upgraded the kernel from 2.6 to 4.4. .4. And of course, PXN is, is enabled. The message is restricted, so no crash log anymore. Uh, good news is KLSR are not enabled on CID. Uh, uh, so our workmate Nielsen decided to find our own escalation vulnerability. Uh, today he can't be here, so I'm going to help him introduce this part of research. According to iParameter rules of browser, the device file, NVMap, and NVHost control can be accessed by browser. So we mainly focus on the NVMap. NVMap created by Linux driver memory manager for Tiger GPU. Uh, user process can send many IO control commands by calling IO control function. When user process call IO control function with command pin, User process need to provide a pointer to the structure NVMap pin handle. And the function NVMap IO control pin OP will copy these structures from user memory to kernel memory. In this structure, the pointer handles points to an array of NVMap handle structures. Uh, sorry, uh, the, point, the pointer handles the points to an array of pointers to array to NVMap handle. And in the deeper function, NVMap pin IDIs will invalidate every NVMap handle structures in this array from start to end in a full loop. So next, if there is an invalid VMAP handle structures, these invalid handle structures and other invalid, and other VMAP handle structures in this array before these invalid structures will be processed by the function VMAP handle put. The function VMAP handle put will decrease the reference of these invalid structures. Since the pointer of this invalid NVMap structure is provided by user process, so we can decrease any integer data by one in kernel memory. So we decrease the, the address of accept four in syscall table. Then uh, to, uh, to an instruction BRXR3, so we can hijack the PC to any address by setting the false argument of accept four. We hijack the PC to JLP gadgets to achieve arbitrary address read and write. What we need is just to set the proper arguments of accept four. To bypass I parameter. We patched the AG profile mode with AppArmor complaint. We also patched the set RES UID, so we can gain root privilege on CID. Next, uh, Yue Feng Du will be telling you about how to bypass the code signing protection. All right, thank you. <sighs> Everyone knows that we have bypassed the code signing protection. Uh, in 2017, but before we tell you how we bypass the code signing protection, let's take the time back to 2016 and see how the code signing protection is added and why it is added. In 2016, 
we have de we have published a report that we have hacked the Tesla cars, and it involves an important thing in the gateway called the update software, which is the updater. The name of the updater is boot image, which is loaded from the SD card, and files on SD card are transferred from the CID via the Ethernet, and also some files on the SD card is written by the gateway itself, uh, for example, some can logs and some diagnostic things. And Neither signature nor third is applied to the update software, so we can just upload our modified software directly to the gateway and reboot the interview room. After we have submitted the bug reports, Tesla added some signature check process uh, to it. Uh, the updated software will be checked using the SHA-512 and ED-2519 uh, using those, you can see those, this function is here. And we also consider to do some cryptography attack. However, we don't think it's really easy because all those constants and keys seem carefully picked. They have really talented engineers. So we turn around to check its implementation. Uh, there are two things we need to check. First, how the updater is written to the SD card. And second, how the updater is executed. Uh, you can use some protocols to write the file to the SD card. Here, it's running by the file operate agent. And the protocol is used is something like a TLV style. And so, uh, like we have said, if there is a length, the command, command code, and the data. And you can read file. For example, here I want to read file image. And I can also remember file. For example, I want to rename from file image to used image. However, if you want to transfer the updater, which is named in boot image directly to the gateway, it's prohibited. Oh, here. Uh, why? Because it's reject rejected here. There is a code exists here to for forbidden a boot image uploaded directly or renamed from an existing file. So how you can transfer a boot image to it? This should be finished by a diagnostic agent. The diagnostic, the diagnostic agent also runs its own protocol. Uh, we call it a gateway diagnostic protocol. This, this protocol has a fixed length of 32 bytes, and the related command to transfer an update software on it is that reboot for update. It ha only has one argument, which is the file name. And in the related section, it will verify the, if the file is correct. Um, you can see it here verify some message using the algorithm we have previously talked about, and rename the file if the content of this, this file is correct and signed by Tesla. So he, here is the general procedure. You cannot write a boot image directly to the SD card. Instead, the first, the file agent should write a no boot image to the SD card. And second, the diagnostic agent from on the CID will tell Gateway to check if the nobody image is correct. And Gateway, after check the nobody, nobody image is signed by Tesla, will rename nobody image to boot image. Uh, we have said that the command related here is called reboot for update. So then the Gateway itself will reboot. And uh, Last year, we have said that the gateway is running our PowerPC chip. So when reset is triggered, there is some code, which we call it bloater, will be executed first. The bloater is written by Tesla, and it would check if the boot image exists in the SD card. And if it, and if it exists, it will check the boot image have a red checksum. And if so, it will also check something such as the uh, magic path uh, here. All uh, right, yeah, here, and try to put it, just copy to uh, the memory area and just jump to there. And uh, maybe you have seen that there is actually a problem here. Uh, bloater will not check the signature of the boot image in either the first version or the second version. This is because if you want to update bloater for the current cards, it is really dangerous, since if you Write a bad wrong, and we will get a bricked gateway. And a bricked gateway means a bricked CID, and it means a bricked car. So you have to 
send their cards to some more shops. And the most important reason is, is that Without cheap level secure boot applied in, uh, uh, in the factory, after the boot itself, itself is completely useless because if your gateway code itself has vulnerabilities, it can still be attacked. And you can still operate those SFRs to unlock the flash areas and write another boot into it. So in short, we can always gain access again if a boot image can be put directly into the SD card. And then we turn around to check the file system implementation of the gateway. After some, you know, Googling, uh, GitHub, and searching everything we can find, we found the Tesla may be using FATFS Revision 9, which is written by CHAN, and they basically didn't, char didn't change much config. And in the source code of the FATFS, uh, we found before, uh, it, there, there is a function in the code called FATFS rename, which is used to re rename one file to another file. And in this, in this function, we found it will strip leading spaces and DOS uh, of the new name. So, if you rename A image to this is the space and B image, it would have the same effect with FATFS rename to, from A image to B image. And every, everyone can see that those two file names are different. And the string compare will return, or I don't know, uh, positive or negative. Anyway, it's not zero. So here is a pretty simple exploit. First, we upload our custom mask update software to the gateway. We call it bad image, update, bad update image, sorry. And they rename it from bad update image to space, here leading space and boot image. And here the FATFS implementation of the gateway will rename it to boot image. So now you have a boot image on your SD card. And then reboot. And after reboot, your boot image is get executed. So this tells us never boot image without signature verify or without secure boot. You should always have a secure boot in your own hardware. And here is how we bypass the code signing protection. Mm, let me check it. Yeah. Uh, actually, Gateway is a key part of the whole OTA process. And it's important to tell the OTA, the OTA process to you. So next, I will cover something in the whole OTA procedure. First, let's check out some key critical components uh, during the whole OTA process. Uh, the server, of course. It is, it's OTA, so you have a server instead of a shop. And then the server will deploy a bundle to CID, which is a large screen you have seen. And the, the CID will deploy your firmware, your firmware bundle to other components such as the gateway and the SA. And the most importantly, since ECUs, all those ECUs such as the EST, is not connected directly to the CID. So gateway will flash them using some uh, some, some customized protocols or something like UDS. Let's talk about the first part, which is how the firmware bundle is deployed. What is a firmware bundle? The bundle is a large file that contains anything required to do, to do a fresh upgrade on a Model S or Model S car. It's actually a Scratch FS file, and this file is encrypted and is distributed uh, through the CDN. So before we talk about those CDN things, let's talk about another module which is very important during an OTA procedure. We call it message box. Each car has a message box, and each message box contains lots of messages, and each message contains a command. So if you want to update a car, you, the server should put, the, put a special message into this car's message box. And, uh, uh, let's say we, maybe you have talked about it, is a QT car. The QT car is a process running on CID of the customer's car, and this process will pick unread messages actively. So here is the first step, which we call a handshake. The process, QT car, will get if there are any unread messages, and if there are new updates available, Cloud would return with an initiate firmware handshake. And Qt car, after it has received this message, message will send command 
do handshake to CID updater. After CID updater have collected this command, it will collect hardware infos. For example, if this is a 4WD car, or if this car has an autopilot ECU, and also collect software, collect soft, 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 sorry, soft, software signature. And this signature is actually a checksum of the current firmware running on CID. After all those information are collected, they will be sent to the cloud, which is the handshake server, with the handshake request. And the cloud server will check if those information are correct, and if this car should have an update, and if so, it will return a correct handshake, up, handshake result. Uh, after handshake is completed, it's time to feature firmware. So here is the second step. After CID updater have got the handshake information, it will verify there is a file called package signature in the handshake result, and CID updater will check if this signature is correct. And if so, CID will read what we call it a download guidelines. It's actually something contains a URL from a CDN and a key and the checksum for the new bundle. And CID updater will download the firmware bundle from the CDN. And once downloaded, it will check its checksum and decrypt it, it, it decrypt it if possible. After decrypt, of course, if there anything error occurred, it will just break. So what will happen if something break? There, existing, we, uh, there have something we call job management. And this is the key part for test of OTA. Uh, when you handshake, you will get a job ID. And you need to bypass several checkpoints during the whole OTA procedure. And the checkpoint name and related info and the job ID will be posted directly to the remote server, actually the handshake server. Uh, so we believe uh, in Tesla, engineers might set up this with a pretty complex telemetry infra infrastructure. So they can make very quick response to, if any, bugs in their new OTA package. After the bundle have been deployed to the CID, now it's time to separate them through the car. Let's talk about the first step, which we call Ethernet connected ECUs. Those ECUs are connected to the CID with Ethernet, and they all have our updater agent. For, exa for example, for SA, we have SA updater, and for CID, we have CID updater. And they are sharing nearly the same framework, although uh, considering they are running on different platforms, the code may be different. Uh, some code will be different, but most of them are still the same. And after CID got the firmware, it will distribute to other updater agents. For example, if we want to update SA, we will consider CID updater as a local server and SA updater as a remote agent. And both local server and remote agent would run a service. We call it command service listener. This service could be used to get a remote agent, which means local server, the CID updater, can get remote agent, uh, SA updater, if if possible, uh, if, uh, if necessary, sorry. And what, when we say get, it means the local server can get any log message from the remote agent. And the local server can send commands if authorized to the remote agent. Again, we need to take SA and the, as an example to say how a common uh, or Ethernet connected ECUs is connected, is up updated. Of course, the first step is that the remote hardware, the SA, need to get the firmware. After CID have got and decrypted the firmware from the cloud, it will get updater, get the SA updater, and send a new update notification command to the SA updater. And then, SA updater will go to the stage we call the staged. And at the same time, basically at the same time, the update updater will start an HTTP server, which is used to provide some firmware files to the SA updater. And after both of them prepared, SA updater will download the firmware using the HTTP server we have just mentioned. 
after the firmware is downloaded, the firmware will be verified using info which have been provided in the new update notepad. And the update, SA updater will go into another setter. We call it staging. And then it comes to step two. You can see it basically works like an Android AB update. Uh, there is an A part is the running part, and B part is the backup part. The current software is running on A part. And the SA updater will just read the new root FS, the new DTB, the new kernel to the B part. And the SA updater will try to switch two bot chains, the primary bot chain and the recovery bot chain, to part B. And then the SA updater will verify if he ha it had made changes to those bot chains correctly and verify if possible. And then the new firmware is now staged and the new firmware on the B part is inactive now. Here is the general procedure. So you have got a new update and the SA is go staged. And after the update is verified, the SA will staging. And after the firmware is written on the B part, the SA is staged and the new software is inactive. Finally, the SA will reboot itself. Now, as the new software is active now. After we have talked about how the SA and other connected, uh, and other Ethernet connected ECUs are updated, let's talk about how Gateway and other CIDs are updated. We call those ECUs connected to, connected to the Gateway traditional ECUs. For example, the central body controller or front body controller or something like that. They will be connected to the gateway. And we have mentioned it last year, we have mentioned it, and previously we have also said that uh, there is an updater called boot image, and there is a, a zipped file called release TGC, and the updater mode file called UPD. And now we will introduce how all those files are picked and created. All of those firmware exists in a subfolder under the deploy folder. We, we have just said the firmware bundle is a squash FS, right? So there is a deploy folder and there is seed, seed artifacts version 2. And in this folder, there are some important files. Updater, of course, you have to, you have to maintain this, the boot image. And a text file which describes the firmware version, we call it release version. And two TSV files, we don't know what is TSV, and we also don't know what is rep represents, but Tesla just use them. Those two TSV files are used to describe the firmware info we will talk about, talk about later. And another file is a TSV file, we call it internal options default. It will have some default configuration. And the last and the most important are many folders. They are named by the ECU name, for example, ESP, GCW, uh, DS, uh, DAS, or something like that. And the firmware is stored in this form. For the ECU name, for example, gateway here, and the provider ID here, provider ID here is uh, one, and the firmware name, uh, I just read gateway fw.hex, but the actual thing might be different. And it's time to describe the TSV file. The TSV file would follow this pattern. The first line, the first line is always a version hash. And the each line is following the same pattern. The ECU name here, GCW, and the provider, six. And the path to the firmware, like, like we have just said, GCW, one, models GCW, R4. And the new name, which means if you want to put this file into the release TC, you should rename it to gateway.hash. And the company name, of course, the GCW. And check some, uh, CRC32, of course. And some requirements. Requirements means if this firmware could be used under a 4W car or have a ESP interface or something like that. The last field is signature. This field and also we have that the signed meter data map TSV are added after our bug report in 2016. And they are used to verify if the uh, ECU firmware along with those informations are correct. So after all those words, finally, how the file is created and sent to the gateway. 
finally. CID updater will pick up firmware from the firmware bundle. And CID, CID updater will first get the car configuration, either for W car, either expensive or inexpensive, and some other configurations if possible. If the configuration it wants to collect does not exist in the current car, it will use what we have said, the internal default options. And then those configurations will be compared with values in the send metadata to TSV. And it will pick the most suitable firmware as, as good as possible, of course. And pack the related file, uh, GTAB hacks or ESP hacks into release GC. And after the related firmware is packed, it will also take the related line in the metadata TSV out into another TSV file exists in the release TGZ. And the next step is create correct update file. Create correct update file. Um, for example, in factory, maybe we think in factory they will use factory UPD, and in service mode they will use service UPD file. And after those two files, along with the boot image are ready, they will be sent to the gateway. The boot image will be sent under the name no boot image. And the last step, of course, is the final step for the whole OTA procedure is send a command reboot for update with the argument boot image. No boot image, sorry. With the argument no boot image. So, here is the whole OTA procedure. And after gateway restarted, basically, OT server will deploy bundles to CID, and CID will deploy something to IC, IC update itself. And CID will also deploy or update package to the gateway. Gateway will update all those ECUs, which is performed by boot image. And it will also update itself, the gateway itself, also performed by boot image. So, um, I wonder how many people have met us last year. Last year we have also shown our Easter egg video. And the OTA procedure is what we use to deploy our firmware into the different ECUs. And now Wen Kaijang will tell us why, uh, how we modified and patched those firmware and how the whole Easter egg is working. Um, okay. Uh... So before I start my section, uh, I want to ask how many guys here have uh, Tesla already? And uh, how many guys, uh, and personally, I want to ask a question. How many guys have BMW? Oh, no. And uh, so uh, now I get this point, and uh, so many guys without uh, Tesla, and uh, see some guys only have one Tesla to talk how to hack in Tesla. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, yeah, uh, because the uh, I talking Easter egg, I want to ask, uh, I want to uh, uh, ask one question. What is the Easter egg? Uh, you you got some choice. The first choice is you can buy a Model X, and uh, you can play the Easter egg uh, from time to time, and uh, you can play it. And uh, I do believe the Tesla dealer will never tell you how exactly the Easter egg works. But now I can tell you how the uh, more details about the Easter egg. And uh, another question is the, why we last year to choose the um, release the video about the customer uh, Easter egg. Because you know, last last year we released a video about a week how we control the vehicle and uh, last year why we choose to release the video. And uh, this year we don't release any video. And uh, so, uh, because uh, a customer the Easter egg shows our very deep study on the vehicle's issues, uh, especially on the body control issues, and uh, we because we patched a lot of firmware in the v uh, body control issues to uh, to make our own Easter egg. And the Easter egg can be divided into three parts. Uh, the, fir uh, the first part is about the, is in the CID. It's about the, because you know, if you want to trick the Easter egg, you should uh, have a long press 
on the CID uh, of the logo of Tesla. And uh, then also the CID were responsible for the music uh, playing. And uh, another part is about the status check. Uh, because you know, you cannot uh, trigger the Easter egg when the vehicle is on the high, uh, highway and uh, when the vehicle is running, you cannot trigger the uh, Easter egg. So make, to make safety, uh, to, make the, uh, to make safe, and uh, the Tesla will do some status check on different uh, uh, kind of uh, canvas. And another important part is the, about the action and the lights part. Because in this part, all the issues in, on the body control cam, uh, and all the issues relative to the uh, body, control, uh, body control will be uh, attended to the Easter egg. And uh, one of the most important uh, issues is about, uh, its name is bo uh, BCCEM. Uh, body control center. Uh, it can process the, some signal from the fob, and also it will trick the uh, final Easter egg. And now I think I can divide the Easter egg into uh, three stages. The first stage is about the trigger in uh, on CID because uh, as an official uh, Easter egg, uh, you should first of all you should get in the car and uh, have a long press on the. On the uh, on the Tesla logo and uh, enter some passcode and uh, to trick the uh, Easter egg and then you should uh, get uh, uh, outside the you should be outside the vehicle and uh, click the fob and uh, trick the um, trick the Easter egg then all the Easter egg will start. So there are three stages. The first stage it triggers on CID and uh, the stage two is the trigger and the, uh, of the BCCM and uh, then the Easter egg will start. Uh, so the, uh, the first stage is uh, about the tricks on CID. Uh, because after you have a long press of the T logo on CID, uh, there's well a signal from, uh, from CID to send to gateway, and the gateway will transfer the, CI, uh, the signal to the body cam. And uh, it will use the UDP Ethernet. Uh, if you want to know the details, and you can check the white paper we released last year. And the stage two is about the FOB signal processing uh, processed uh, because uh, when you click the FOB, the signal will send to the uh, BCCM, uh, and the BCCM will uh, send a signal on the body cam, and the body cam will transfer the signal to the CID to tell all the ECUs. Let's start. Uh, let's get ready to uh, start the Easter egg. And then when we check the detail of the BCCEM, uh, we noticed that the uh, Model X uh, FOB has two kinds of signal. Uh, the first kind of signal is a very traditional signal. It's the 433 m, uh, MHz. And uh, another signal is about the BLE. And uh, the BLE, uh, because you know, if you have a Model X, you will find out that the Model X will, uh, will get the location of the FOB. And it will open the door automatically for you. So uh, Tesla used the BLE to get the location of the um, fob. And when the BCCN uh, know the, get the signal from from the fob, and it will uh, send it to the body cam. On the stage three, is the uh, Easter egg start uh, because. All, uh, all the ECU, um, all the ECU should be synchronized by one signal on the body cam, and we find out that the uh, BC front can uh, will uh, send the signal to tell other ECUs what action uh, should be done at this or should be do uh, this moment. And uh, then we find out something uh, in the BC front. There's a, a very large scale of Data we call it uh, Easter egg table, and the table uh, there are something defined it in the table to define the actions, define the time, and uh, the BC front will transfer the table on the body can to tell other issues what to do. And so at a very uh, at a glance of the uh, list of the, uh, the table, you can notice that almost. Uh, um, uh, there are almost 10 ECUs in the Tesla attended into the uh, Easter egg show. So uh, it's really a big challenge and a, a, a very large rever uh, reverse work because you, you should uh, locate the code in so many ECUs firmware. And that's why we choose to uh, release um, custom Easter egg show.
And now talking about how we do patch. Because in, uh, first uh, is you, uh, we show the pa do patch in the CID, and then we show the reverse, the ECUs, and then I will talk about how we patch the ECUs. And uh, in the CID, the uh, uh, Tesla guys use a QT car, and in QT car, it will do some check. The first check is about the time. Uh, it will make sure the time is after uh, Christmas Day, and also it will check the passcode. You should uh, uh, input the right code, and the, in the QT car, it will check it. Uh, so uh, you should bypass the, these two check, and also you should do another thing uh, to use some hook technique uh, uh, skills to uh, emulate uh, to simulate the user press in the QT car. So uh, that's a very large uh, reverse work. And also when we talk about the reverse of ECUs, because uh, it's very lucky, uh, it's very luck, it's a good luck because all the body control ECUs are board, uh, power PC. So you know uh, Ada has a decompiler of the uh, power PC use, so you can, uh, it can make the reverse work um, be a little bit fast. And then we find out a string in the firmware. It's uh, FreeSkill MQX. That's uh, FreeSkill made the uh, autos and uh, these articles, you can download some source code online. And uh, one feature of the feature of the uh, this uh, this articles is about the segment table. At the very beginning of the initialization, the articles will, according to the segment table, to copy some data to the target data, uh, target address. And you can see that this table and the at the beginning of the table, uh, the source address and the target address are same, so it don't need a copy, but at uh, the last three table, you can find out that the autos uh, the will copy some data from the room to the RAM. And that, uh, that table will be very he uh, helpful for to locate the Easter egg. Uh, then we should, uh, let me talk about something about the patch of BCCM. Uh, in the BCC, uh, when you do, use some reverse work and you will find out one point will check the status of the, um, the fob, so you just need to pa uh, patch this function and to bypass the uh, states, uh, the fob check. And let's go back to talk about the BC front. Um, we find out, uh, you know, uh, it's very hard to locate the code of Easter egg, so we uh, use some method. We uh, uh, compared quite a lot of uh, versions of firmware, uh, of ECU firmware. Then at the uh, exact uh, version, we find out that one of the firmware suddenly become very large. And now you notice that the Easter egg must in it. And because you know Easter egg is very complex, it, uh, there must be some data to uh, illustrate, uh, to indicate the motions of the uh, uh, all issues. So we quickly find uh, the uh, one firmware, and we find out the one segment in the data uh, of the data become very large according to the segment table. So now we can um, buy some gas, and we can locate the east uh, the egg table. And then when you, in the ad, you check the reference of the uh, the egg table, you will find out that there's a number which indicated uh, mm, the length of the egg table. Now, uh, at this moment, you can get your own custom the Easter egg. And then now is the, uh, my current drilling to tell you how to root APE. Thank you. Thanks, Wenkai. So uh, on Tesla Model X, the autopilot ECU is the most significant uh, component uh, which provides the driver assistant uh, function. I uh, like the CID. Uh, there are a few interfaces on APE for interacting with outside world. So on Tesla, APE, CID, IC, and Gateway are on the same network. So firstly, we focus on the ports opened by APE. From the result of a map, there are four open uh, four open the ports. Two of these three, two of these ports opened by the binary API updater. The first port supports an interactive shell and supports many commands. Some of these commands can be used by CID to upgrade the system of API. The second port is 
Uh, the second part supports a, a simple HTTP server. In some situation, this server can be used to provide some fun to other component. The command handshake will request a JSON from Tesla server. This JSON contains an URL to new firmware and other information. The command install will pass this JSON and download the firmware. The, the command, uh, the function M3 factory deploy is a new added command around the version 17.17.4. This command and the install command are unprivileged command and can be executed by CID without restriction. So the argument of this command, the argument of this command is a JSON string. In this JSON stream, there is a valid key, self underscore server, and the value is a, uh, the value is a patch to a fine. So when install command pass this JSON stream, we can serve arbitrary fine to the HTTP server. So in our exploit, we serve the Tesla one on HTTP server. And the result, and the log of AP updater shows Tesla One successfully served on HTTP server. We downloaded the Tesla One from AP to CID, and use its content to pass auth command. Now we can run system command with root privilege, so we enabled root SSH login and got a root shell on AP. Tesla fixed this vulnerability by forbidding function M3 factory deploy run on APE and adding a check of forbidden directories in function do so. This vulnerability fixed in middle 2017 and the vulnerability exists only for less than one month. In conclusion, let me sum up our presentation. We talk about the vulnerability in WebKit and NVMap. We utilize them to gain root privilege on CID. We talk about how we bypass the code signing protection. Furthermore, we reviewed the details of OTA process. We explain how we customize Easter egg. Finally, we introduce the vulnerability we used to root APE remotely. Now we can nearly compromise all the components on Tesla, including CID, Gateway, ECU, uh, uh, AP, and other ECUs. So we reported the vulnerability in CID and Gateway to Tesla. Tesla fixed them very quickly and helped assign the two CVE numbers to the vulnerability in Gateway and NVMap kernel module. So this is the second time we successfully hacked into the system of Tesla. Uh, but the whole system of Tesla is more security, uh, is more secure than before. Apart from WebKit and the kernel, the IP tables in CID, the IP tables in CID and APE are more strict. In CID updater and API updater, uh, lots of bugs are fixed in history. Also, SXS token no longer used as a password, so the content of Tesla One cannot be used to pass all the command. A big security enhancement is the whole system does not support downgrade anymore. So I must say, Tesla is really concerned about the security of their cars. So thank you. That's our presentation. <laughs> <laughs>